Going out for a walk today. I have Maggie and Diesel. We haven't been out for a walk at all yet this spring, so just getting back into the swing of them being, um, you know, walking. Maggie's pretty good about keeping him uh, going because he gets sidetracked and, you know, wanders off. Wax her in the butt. Come on, Maggie. Go. So she knew exactly when she saw her head harness what it, what we was doing. So Mag. So they don't go out for walks without these little head harnesses around their head. Right now they're all over the place because it's our first walk. But they'll get they'll get the hang of it. Look at Diesel. He's a little terror. Um, they do have their two inch collars on. Those are basically just for looks or if I need to like, um, I don't know, grab one of them. I got something to get them by, but they're really not for anything. I don't even put tags on them because I've had an instant in a, a situation with uh, tags. I used to put those um, clips on them and then I had a, a couple of them horsing around. Uh, so one of them went through, it was actually Fiona, the clip went through her paw, so that was fun trying to get it out. So we don't do, we don't do tags on them anymore. They're all chipped anyway, so if they lost their way home, that's, they all can be scanned. So it didn't take them long to settle down. Maggie's pretty happy, she said, I'm going out. So this is some good exercise. I'll see what I can do about getting some more of them outside. But um, we do live out in the country, but this is kind of a busy road because it's a long street. And, um, but it is nice for walks. You know, they get to see other people, cars, and it gets them used to that. It is really, Today was overcast most of the day, but it ended up turning out pretty nicely. So um, I figured I'd come home and take my little scoots out for a walk. So that's what we're doing. Um, and Eva's sunbathing out back in the yard. So, and she is pregnant, so I won't take anybody pregnant on a walk. And when I take Fiona and Frank, we don't go very far because again, they're seniors, and as much as they love it, they just don't have the stamina. We got technical problems here with Diesel. He's all over the place. But Maggie's pretty calm. So, um, I think next heat we're going to breed her with Diesel too. We did try to breed her with uh, Farley, but it just didn't take. So, six months. Try again. With this... This little man, this little menace. These two do play the most, and you can see the hair. They're shedding, too. But we're going to try to enjoy our walk. Yeah. Feeling fabulous. Is it Fiona? Oh, jeez. Nala, how dare you? She's trying to be her fabulous self. No, I doesn't care what you've got to say. Ah, uh, Noah. She said I don't care. She's so silly, like you actually care, Noah. You're busy. You're busy girl. Was you rolling on the rug, Chubby? Oh, was you rolling on the rug, Chubby? Oh, you're so fabulous. Yes, you is. Yeah, oh, Eva hears me talking sweet to you. I like that. Her don't like that. Oh, silly. Oh, silly. Oh, silly, chubby girl. Hi, Molly. She's so sweet, Fiona. Oh, she's a queen. You think you're the queen around here? I think she says yes, she does. So, um, I said in the last video that I was going to try to get a x-ray and I was able to get an appointment. So tomorrow morning, Miss Nala and I have an appointment in, at our reproductive vet. Um, it is about a little over an hour drive, but they're, they're a reproductive vet and that's the closest one to us that I like. So we're gonna head out tomorrow morning bright and early. 
um, and see what we got cooking in there. But today is such a beautiful day. Uh, we took a couple of them for a walk. We'll probably take some more tomorrow for a walk and enjoy the beautiful weather. Huh, Fiona? She can't be bothered. Huh, Fiona? Oh, Fiona. Oh, Fiona. Oh, Fiona. Maybe we'll take you for a walk tomorrow. Would you like that, big girl? Did you like that, big girl? Did you go get a drink of water? Now you're all out of breath. Yep, been pacing the floor. And I got the back door open, so she's coming in and out, enjoying herself. So here's a close-up of her. She can't get too close because then she's going to investigate what I'm doing. So we'll see how many we got in that belly tomorrow, huh? Let all the families know that are waiting for one of your kids. Can't wait to see them. We figure within a week she'll be having them. Huh, within a week. They're due on the 4th. That would be an Easter to remember, huh? Yeah, Easter. You're going to have Easter babies? Maybe. Maybe, Nala. Oh, you don't want mommy to scratch your buns. Okay. Okay, Nala. So we're at the reproductive vet. We had to get up early. It's an 8.30 appointment. Nala's been panting the whole ride here, so I've had the windows open. And it's only 50 degrees, so it's a little chilly. But she's hot. So she's wondering, what are we doing, Mom? She's all excited to get in the car. So now we get to find out. We have our appointment, and it's still curbside, so we will be letting them take Nala in and waiting outside for her. So hopefully she doesn't get too nervous. She likes people, though, so it should go well. Are you resting, sweetheart? Okay. I thought we talked about going and sleeping on the other side. Hmm. So, we had the dilemma of her not wanting to use to jump over that. So, I did have like an access panel that I was actually originally going to use for something else. For a potty area to add on to here. But, I figured Nala could go over that. And she can. Come on, Nally. She just chooses not to. Come on. No, go around the other way. Come on, girl. Come on. Remember we showed you? Huh? Come on. She knows how to get in here. Come on. Come on, Nellie. Look over here. Yep. Got a reminder. Good girl. Why don't you sit in here? Mama picks it for you. So, that is... The conclusion, <laughs> so she doesn't have to jump it. She can go over that little tiny wall and not have to worry about jumping it. Huh, baby. Hot, let me turn your fan up a little higher. So I normally have the white washboard over that, but um, that's what it is underneath. So I can, by the time the puppies start to get big enough, I'll put the board back there so you won't notice it. But I got, um, I eventually put these mats in here, the black ones, because she was just sleeping on the floor and it's kind of rough on the bones. So I put one in front of the door and I had one here and I just moved it over here hoping that, you know, she'd want to be on it. It's more comfortable, but she will, if I'm sitting here, if I'm not, she is on there, but she has been running hot and she's getting big. So we do have her due at April 4th, Easter. We'll see if she goes that long. But um, actually had our appointment today. We were able to get an appointment at the reproductive vet and um, it was bright and early. 8.30 was our appointment. So uh, we got up and went. She likes going for rides. So we went there, we, she went in for the x-ray. She's really good about uh, going in like that. She likes people. So she just gets a little nervous sometimes, but she did really well. So we did the x-ray and it looks like nine puppies. So they think it's a good size litter. I do too, I'm pretty happy. 
nine little puppies so i just got the x-rays back and i'll i'll put a picture up of them so you can see um i actually take and um manipulate the x-ray a little bit to darken it up to see the skeletons a little bit more um so she's due let's see i said the fourth um so the reproductive vet also does his little calculations and tries to figure out like without knowing exactly what date she ovulated he'll try to figure out her due date too um he wanted to do a progesterone test but i said no it's kind of early um i think it is yeah she's due easter sunday so she has a little over a week left um he has her as the earliest she'll go into labor is next wednesday so that's not too far off i thought sunday but if you go by like her earlier breedings, it would bring it back a little earlier. So we'll be prepared for that also. Um, he's getting back to the progesterone. He wanted to check, cause what they do is they check the levels and what it does is the progesterone actually will come down um, when birth is imminent. So it has to be, like when we brought Ellie in, I think it was at a two. So she's definitely ready to go. That gives them a detailed, an idea of like how close they are for the puppies to come. I've done progesterone testing before when I knew I had to have like planned C-sections and it would be like a 12 or something like that. That's definitely too high. You don't want them to take the puppies at a higher number of progesterone level because chances are they'll be born too soon. And even if they're born alive, they'll end up fading out and not surviving. Um, she did have a singleton last time and we uh, did a C-section and he didn't survive. And I almost think that he was took too early because he was um, only a pound and a pound's not really that big for a Great Dane puppy. So I'm gonna go by my calculations. I've I'm more accurate. I feel like I'm more accurate. They probably think I'm not, but this light keeps going in and out. Um, so by my calculations, um, would be mid to end of next week. And then Sunday being the latest, but her milk is in. He noticed her milk was in too. Um, so what we do is we go to the reproductive vet, usually get an x-ray. We don't confirm pregnancies there because I can confirm them myself with my ultrasound machine but we do x-rays by them doing x-rays they know she's you know she's gonna be due if we have problems they they kind of get a heads up like okay we have nala that's pregnant if anything goes wrong um you know they're they bring her in is what they'll tell me so um i'm hoping that she can whelp at home that's what the goal is, but it doesn't always go as planned. I've learned that. So we'll see, but we do have nine puppies on the ultra, on the x-ray. Um, the x-ray is kind of faded still because, I mean, ideally you want to go to closest as possible to delivery dates to get a better solidification of the bones. So I saw all these little skulls and then trying to match the spines up but they said nine, so, and um, a couple people looked at them, so I'm confident in that range that we'll get. Sometimes you may get a hidden stowaway, but we'll see. I'm pretty happy with nine. This was an AI, and this is Diesel's first litter, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep one of hers and probably not one of Eva's. Only because I do have Magnolia from Eva and I do have another one in mind that I want to keep on her next breeding. So I don't normally take on more than one or two puppies at a time. So that would be the two. Um, the other one would be a fall breeding <clears throat> that we would keep. But I um, love the idea of having Diesel and um what he brings for colors and then what nala has in her background and what they both share for colors so what they can kick off i'll be anxious to see what they have um again all these puppies have homes uh, the only 
we have on our Facebook, no, on our web page, I don't have it on Facebook. On our web page, we do have our next breedings, which would be Lexi and um, Eva. So we just wait for them to come in heat. We do kind of estimate when they're gonna come into heat, but sometimes they can go sooner or later. But um, last time with Ebby, she had kind of a split heat weird. I think she had a UTI at the time. So, um, you know, we got her all squared away. She's in good, good health now. And that does happen. I mean, if I'm always thankful when it does happen, but sometimes it doesn't. So, I mean, sometimes that's just it's mother nature. You can't. So we're just it's kind of like enjoy what you have. And it makes it hard for people that are on their waiting list because we have some really patient families, honestly. God, God bless us because I don't know if I should would be that patient. But um, unless it was specific. Like I knew what I wanted and was waiting for, there goes the light again, waiting for um, for that particular breeding. So, uh, and I did mention, I think Eva only has a singleton and that one has a, ba uh, has a baby, has a family also. Not sure, I mean, I could be wrong. There maybe could be more, but I only see a singleton, so. And that one has a family also. So we do have um, just our two that are posted on our web page, and we have actually started taking um, some deposits for those litters as well. Um, anybody that doesn't make this will automatically go to those litters, and I will put them obviously at the top because they've waited longer than anybody that jumps on now. So once I get um, when she has her puppies and we know who's going to get a puppy and we mark them off our list, then I take the remainders and add them to tops of next available list because some of them do wait a long time. Um, some people feel like, oh, I've waited a long time, but honestly, we've had numerous families that have been waiting. So I hear you, honestly, and I'm the people that have been waiting are definitely going to be, you know, the ones that get puppies. I wish I could, you know, meet everybody's, um, what they want, but it just, we just know that mother nature doesn't work like that. So Nala is a fine now sitting on her thing. She's, um, she has a, we have, we buy a filled bones from Chewy. She's got one. Let's take a peek. So I tried to sneak up on her earlier. I'm not very good at sneaking up on her because she was laid out and resting and I wanted to see her puppies moving. I should be able to see him moving. I think I did from the door, but every time I come in, she you know jumps up, wants to see what I'm doing. She's very social and sweet. So right now she's she's got a bone, but you can see it's, um, she's kind of a thick girl anyway. So she, I thought she looked like she had a big litter, which I think nine is a good size, but, um, oh, that paddle fan feels good. So she's chewing on her bone. I got the mat down to give her a little bit more cushion. She has her other cushions, um, got this open so she doesn't have to be stressed out and trying to jump over this cause I don't want to stress her out. Um, she's been spending her time up here in her whelping room. We do have surveillance in this room, so we can see what she's doing at all the time. Um, but she's eating more, going out potty more. She does come down and spend time with us. This is like her downtime, so she's kind of tired from, hey baby, from being out and about today with me in the car. Because um, it is about an hour and 15 minute ride one way, so you figure that's about three hours there and back. And we did stop for Duncan's. We, she needed a bite to eat because I didn't feed her breakfast trying to get a better x-ray. So she had some munchkins on the way home. 